Okay, here we go. We have a screencast lecture. Today's topic is changes of state. We continue, and this will be our final part of the changes of state lecture series. This is going to focus on condensation, sublimation, and deposition. Again, our phase changes depend on thermal energy, either being absorbed or released. Matter can change from one state to another. The six types of physical phase changes that we have studied in this unit are melting, freezing, vaporization, and we are going to focus on condensation, sublimation, and deposition. So let's start with talking about condensation. Condensation is defined as the change in state from gas to a liquid, and the uh, one of the more common ones you can think of is like when you see your breath in the winter. You don't always see your breath. It has to be cold out because the water vapor, which is a gas and it is not visible, when that water vapor comes out and hits the cold air, it reduces an energy and those particles actually become a liquid. So what you're seeing is little tiny water droplets going through the air. You're not really seeing your breath. You're seeing actually water vapor from your breath and it is condensing and forming this cloud. That water vapor is always coming out of your breath, out of your body. However, it's only going to be visible when the air is cool enough to condense quite a bit of it so it is visible. The condensation point is defined as the temperature at which a substance changes from a gas to a liquid. And here you see this boy uh, look, looking at another very common example of sublimation. Oh, I'm sorry, of condensation. When you have the uh, uh, warm shower on a cold winter's day, you'll get the fog on the cold mirror from the shower. The condensation point of water is sometimes referred to as the dew point, and dew is when you wake up early in the morning, you go outside, and sometimes you're going to find the grass uh, and leaves wet even when it did not rain. That is dew, that is water vapor from the air that has condensed on the cool grass, the cool plants, and has formed liquid water. Uh, another real common example of condensation is like when people say their glass is sweating and here's a nice hot summer day, you have an ice cold glass of lemonade or water and water vapor in the air hits the cold glass, the temperature drops which drops down the energy level and the gas particles which were moving really really fast and really far apart they slow down and condense, they move closer together and uh, form a liquid or form liquid water in this case. Let's take a look at a short video clip. Now, it's always important to think about and talk about energy levels when we talk about phase changes. Now, the uh, gas of a substance A, let's, talk, let's say we're talking about water vapor, gas is at a very, very high energy level. We've talked about that in the past. And when the water vapor hits a cold surface, the energy level is going to drop significantly, and it can actually form a liquid. So gas condensing, forming liquid. Some other examples of condensation, clouds. Clouds are a great example of condensation. Water vapor in the air as it spreads out because of the low pressure up in the upper atmosphere. That energy has to come from somewhere. That energy comes from the particles themselves. So as they spread out, they actually lose energy because, remember, if, you're, if you recall, uh, energy is needed to change motion or to change uh, the uh, behavior of a substance. So the particles of the water vapor moving far apart, that is a change, a changing position. It is, takes energy to do that. That energy comes from the particles and those particles are able to actually condense and form liquid water, which is what you're seeing clouds are. Fog. Same, same idea, except it's a cloud and it's uh, down on the Earth's surface. Contrails. This is one that a lot of people see when they look up in the sky. You see these long cloud forms coming off of a jet engine. 
Uh, very similar, like what we just talked about with cloud formation. You have uh, water vapor that's compressed and then shot out, and as it expands, on trails, uh, so the water vapor comes out of the jet engine and expands and lowers the energy and condenses to form these clouds. Here's a jet engine, here's a jet fighter going supersonic and doing the same thing. Now, let's shift gears, go to sublimation. Sublimation is a phase change from a solid directly to gas. Here's an example. Uh, an example in this case would be dry ice or solid carbon dioxide. The reason why it's called dry ice is because it's cold like ice. However, it does not melt. So it makes a really good thing, uh, product to use for shipping. Like if you want to ship uh, ice cream, things like that, you go to graders and buy some dry ice. If you want to ship some ice cream over to a friend across the country, and as the dry ice it keeps the ice cream cold, it will sublime instead of melt and become a gas, and so it doesn't ruin the product. It doesn't fill the cooler up with uh, water, like if you shipped it with regular ice. Here is a clip. talk about energy levels again. Now dry ice as a solid is very very low energy. It's a solid. The particles are not moving very fast. They're close together. They're not changing position. As we increase the energy of the carbon dioxide, like just putting it at room temperature, the particles will gain energy. Stop please. And we can have a gain of energy and sublimation will bring us to a gas, uh, for example, gas of carbon dioxide. Here's some examples of sublimation. One of the examples that you might be familiar with is if you ever had uh, ice in a, an ice tray, you may have noticed that sometimes the ice seems to kind of vanish. So over a period of time, you notice that the ice cubes get a little bit smaller. They're shrinking. They're not melting. They're actually subliming. Another example of sublimation is mothballs, if you've ever used these. So you have the uh, solid mothballs, naphthalene, and they will uh, just go into vapor. They do not, do not melt. They, you do not have like a puddle of liquid mothballs. Iodide crystals will sublime. Here's a clip demonstrating that. In this video, we're going to look at the sublimation of iodine. So when we add solid iodine to hot sand, we have a hot plate underneath there, you can see right away we start getting a purple gas. That is iodine gas. And with sublimation, we're going directly from a solid to a gas without passing through a liquid phase. So you can see here that after a while, when that gets even hotter, we get a lot more of that purple iodine gas, which is escaping through the top of the beaker. Okay, now let's talk about deposition, our last one. And deposition is defined as a phase change from gas directly to solid. So we're talking about the opposite of sublimation, just like condensation is the opposite of vaporization. Deposition is the opposite of sublimation. What is the opposite of melting? You should know that, that that is freezing. Correct, guys. Well done. Deposition example, how snow is formed in clouds and frost on the ground. So you may have woken up one morning in the winter and you notice frost covering your windows. How did it get there? Well, that's deposition. Here's a clip. So we can actually capture that gas. Right now it's escaping through the top of the beaker. But we can put a piece of glass on there, a watch glass, with ice on it. And that's really cold. And that's going to change the iodine gas back to a solid. It won't go through a liquid phase. It'll go directly from the gas to a solid. And that will stick on the bottom of the glass. Here's what it looks like from the top. You can see the ice, the watch glass, and then you can start to see that the crystals of iodine are forming underneath. So after a while, the crystals will have formed on the bottom of that glass, and you can see them here sort of dangling down from the watch glass. If we were to take that watch glass off and look at the crystals, they'd look something like this. 
So here in this video I'm actually taking the watch glass off. You can see the iodine gas escaping and then you can see those iodine crystals there. Snowflakes. Snowflakes are pretty neat. And of course for our last phase change of course we have to talk about energy levels. We're talking about deposition so we start with a gas which is high energy level so gas of a substance A and then to get down to solid we need to lose energy and then we end up with a solid substance. Here's some iodine crystals so you remember when we had iodine crystals uh, subliming into iodine gas if we were to take that iodine gas and cool it down quickly we can get those, that iodine gas to sublime form crystals. It does not form a liquid. It forms directly into solid crystals. Pretty neat stuff. Now here's a chart which I think can be helpful for you. This is something I'm going to expect you to know. See if you can identify all of these parts. A, B, C, D, E, F. What I would recommend you doing is pausing this for a minute and trying to answer it on your own. Like for example, this A means going from a solid to a liquid what phase change would that be? Go ahead and pause it here and try to answer these questions. Okay, spoiler alert, here comes the answers. This is something I'd like you to write down. You can write down this chart. I'd recommend pausing it here and doing this chart. All right, guys, that's it. You wanna come say goodbye? Come on over and say goodnight. Okay, guys, see ya. Thanks for joining us. We can't forget that. We'll catch you next time. Have a good evening.